If you ask anyone whether they have worn Adidas clothing or shoes at least once in their life, even people who have never done sports will probably say yes. Adidas is so popular now that it is impossible to imagine the modern market of sporting goods without it. But few people know that the company was founded by two brothers from a poor shoemaker's family, who were able to save it from the crises and the Second World War, but not from themselves. A serious quarrel became a cause of the company's division in two warring brands. Things were so bad that the brothers didn't even speak to each other until the end of their lives. You are watching the Brandcore channel, and today we will talk about how Adidas was able to survive the family feud and despite all the problems, became one of the most recognizable brands in the world. If you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. The Dassler family from a small Bavarian town stands at the origins of the company. A good half of all its inhabitants were engaged in shoemaking, and the father of this family was no exception. In 1920, the Dasslers opened a small manufactory, the management of which was taken over by the youngest of sons, 20-year-old Adolf. He was soon joined by his brother Rudolf, who was involved in the sales, while Adolf got into production. Their friends called them Addy and Rudy. Together, they produced bedroom slippers and orthopedic shoes for training athletes with disabilities. The shoes were created from old military uniforms and tires, on a machine that was made from an ordinary bicycle. And although the business gradually grew, it was still pretty hard to become a leader among a large number of manufacturers of similar products. But Adolf was not going to be thankful for small mercies. Passionate about football, he decided to create comfortable shoes for players. After many unsuccessful experiments, in 1925, Adolf invented an innovative product. Nowadays, you can hardly imagine the Adidas company without it. These were the world's first football boots. Within a year, they became the main products of the factory, and the Dassler brothers decided to expand production to 25 people, who made up to 100 pairs of shoes a day. But they faced a big problem. How to distribute such shoes among customers and clearly show their convenience? Well, it was at that time when the first ever brand collaborations with famous people, in this case with athletes, happened. The Dasslers decided to take advantage of the 1928 Olympics in Amsterdam. Together with German track and field athlete Joseph Weitzer, the brothers developed a new model of running shoes. The sneakers gripped the surface well and allowed the athlete to move faster. Several athletes, having appreciated the advantages of such shoes, used them at the Olympic Games. It was there that the athlete Karolina Ratke won the first gold medal in the history of Germany in athletics in the 800 meters race setting a record that was held until 1944. After the factory loudly declared itself in 1929, the Dasslers began mass-producing soccer cleats, and in 1931 the company created its first tennis shoes. American runner Jesse Owens won four gold medals and set five world records at the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin wearing Dassler shoes. After this event, cleats became the standard for the German Olympic team. Passionate about sports and the production of shoes, Adi Dassler was guided by three principles in his experiments. The shoes had to be as suitable as possible for sports. The shoes had to be wear-resistant, and it should protect the athlete from injuries. It was then that the Dassler's famous trademark, Two Stripes, first appeared on the shoes. They were sewn on shoes not only for beauty, but for better fixation of the foot. Even despite the crisis of the 1930s, the brothers' factory flourished. Already in 1937, the brand Dassler produced 30 models of sports shoes for 11 sports, and the next year, the Dasslers opened a second factory. However, with the arrival of the Second World War, the brothers were sent to the front. Rudolf was sent to a prison camp from which he returned only in 1946. Production facilities were confiscated by the Nazis. Moreover, they even unsuccessfully tried to establish the production of handheld anti-tank grenade launchers at one of the factories. A year later, Adolf returned from the army to produce training shoes for German soldiers. After the war, the city where the brothers' factory was located fell into the American occupation zone. Under the terms of the contribution agreement, Adolf created a thousand pairs of ice skates for the United States and in return received the decommissioned military equipment of the Americans. This saved the firm from ruin, taking into account the post-war crisis and the lack of raw materials. The only way out was to use recycled baseball caps, tents, and cotton jackets in the production of sports shoes. For example, the soles were made from old tires. 
During the same period, quarrels between the brothers became more frequent. In 1948, after the death of his father, Adi and Rudy decided to divide all the assets, agreeing that none of them would use the symbols of the family firm. No one knew the reason for their quarrel. According to one version, the brothers disagreed about the further development of the company. According to another, Adolf's wife Kathy was involved in the case. The quarrel was so serious that the brothers even bequeathed to bury them away from each other. Adolf named his company Adest, and Rudy named his company Ruda. But within a few months, Adest turned into Adidas. Initially, Adolf wanted to name the company Adas. But during the process of registration, it turned out that such a company had already existed. So the entrepreneur at the last moment inserted the letter I in the word. Ruda, meanwhile, was renamed Puma. It was at this point that the Dasslers company split into two brands that became one of the fiercest business competitors of the 20th century. The brothers' rivalry also affected the people working in the factories, dividing them on different sides of the barricades. However, this situation was fruitful for both sides. The feud pushed both companies to constant movement and development and didn't allow the owners to stop for a second. Adolf was endlessly engaged in improving production and searching for new opportunities. He was very scrupulous about the quality of the shoes produced, so if he came across low-quality sneakers, he forced the worker to put them on and walk like that all day long. Since wearing such shoes was painful, the workers treated their work responsibly. Thanks to innovations and high quality, Adidas quickly became one of the main sports brands. In 1949, Adolf partially violated the contract with his brother took two stripes from the Dassler's emblem, added a third to them, and patented the resulting Adidas symbol. Initially, the stripes were painted in the color of the sneakers, but Adolf decided that the white stripes would make the shoes more noticeable. Since 1952, the company has also started manufacturing other products under the Adidas brand. The first such products were sports bags. Then, Adolf ordered from the owner of the textile factory, Willy Zetelreich, 1,000 tracksuits, which were immediately sold out. Partners got along so well that Zetelreich began to sew only for Adidas. The German athletes continued to win, wearing Adidas clothing as if the three white stripes were their mascot. In 1954, the German national team, for the first time, won the FIFA World Cup playing the game in Adidas sneakers. It was done with the help of another innovation from Adidas, removable studs of the cleats. After this victory, Adidas football boot sales increased from 800 pairs to 2,000 pairs per day. And in 1956, Adidas even agreed on the opportunity to advertise products at the Olympic Games in Melbourne. At the same time, Adidas opened production facilities in Norway and France, and later in the United States. By the end of the 1970s, the company already had 24 factories in 17 countries and became the largest sports producer. Neither sporting event, for example the Olympic Games, nor simple competitions were held without Adidas as a partner. In 1970, the Adidas Telstar Ball, named after the satellite, became the official ball at the FIFA World Cup in Mexico. In 1972 appeared the company's famous trefoil, Three leaves embody the company's presence on three continents of the world. On September 6, 1978, at the age of 77, Adolf passed away. The management of the company passed to his widow Katerina. The death of the founder marked the most difficult times for the company in its history. The main reason was the appearance of strong competitors Nike and Reebok, which in the 80s began to conquer North America. By the end of the decade, they held 50% of the U.S. sports shoe market while Adidas held a meager 3%. Adolf Dassler's heirs were unable to keep the company afloat. Adi's wife and their son died a few years apart. Adolf's sister sold the company to the French entrepreneur Bernard Tapia, but he could not bring the company out of the crisis. In 1993, he sold Adidas to a group of French investors led by Robert Louis Dreyfus. With the help of his entrepreneurial talent and work experience in an advertising agency, the company began to reorganize. The marketing budget was significantly increased, and production was decided to move to Indonesia, China, and Thailand so they can save on labor. Already in 1995, profits increased more than twice compared to 1994. In 1997, the company bought the French firm Salomon Sports, a leading producer of winter sports goods. This enabled the company to become the world's second largest producer of sporting goods after Nike. 
And after eight years, Adidas sold this company and used the proceeds to buy 100% of the shares of its competitor, Reebok. Thanks to the deal, Adidas increased its share of the U.S. sporting goods market to 20%. This allowed the company to get as close as possible to Nike, which controlled 35% of the market. You will be surprised, but nowadays, Adidas has only two small factories, in Germany and in the USA. The rest of the products are made to order in 290 different factories. At the end of 2018, the company employed 57,000 people. The company's average turnover is $24 billion of dollars a year, and its net profit is almost $2 billion annually. Adidas is known for its high-profile collaborations, not only with world-class athletes, but also popular singers, music groups, and designers. Now, this global giant is stronger than ever, despite the fact that it has been on the verge of bankruptcy several times. Adolf Dassler always sought to contribute to the development of the sport he was fond of. Football boots with replaceable studs appeared thanks to him. This invention changed people's perception of comfortable sports shoes. Many people remember the Adidas advert video where Muhammad Ali said, impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing became the motto of Adidas and perfectly described the story of an ordinary shoemaker from a provincial town, truly passionate about his business. And thanks to him, a brand was born that is now beloved by many people. And what about you? What brand of sportswear do you prefer? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell not to miss new inspiring success stories.